Happy Easter. I am Tracy Leslie, senior pastor at Trinity United Methodist on this Easter morning when we celebrate that Christ is risen. Hear the scripture from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and she said to them, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples sat out, set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they've taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I've not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and sisters and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. In 1969, Joni Mitchell, disappointed at having missed the flight to Woodstock, wrote her now famous song bearing that title. The song Woodstock, however, is more than a tip of the hat to the music festival in upstate New York. It celebrates that despite some rather, well, suspect activities during the festival, many who went there were motivated to attend because they were looking for a space with beauty and song, a sense of community and peace. Which a song includes some profound lyrics, yet most spiritual were the lyrics of the chorus. We are stardust, we are golden, we are billion year old, carbon caught in the devil's bargain and we've got to get ourselves back to the garden after all that mythical garden of eden is where life began a beautiful life in perfect fellowship with god god planted that garden and there god breathed into the man he'd molded from the earth god's very own breath god's very own spirit. It was our beginning, our genesis. That longing for a return to Eden, the garden of paradise, is like a golden thread that weaves its way through Hebrew writings and tradition over the centuries. Eden becomes a powerful symbol that captivates our soul and our senses. I invite you to just close your eyes and imagine. 
sure it was lush. It was filled with fruit trees that no doubt gave off a yummy aroma. <coughs> We're told that in the evening, there was a cool breeze. Can you feel it? Imagine how refreshing it must have been. It never rained there because water bubbled, bubbled up from the ground to water the garden. What perfection. And God would join you there every evening for a leisurely stroll. We don't know, but I imagine the sunsets were breathtaking. Those golden garden threads of the lost paradise weave through John's gospel as well. Now, I don't want to turn an Easter message into a heavy deep dive Bible study, but here are just a couple of examples. The Jewish tradition understood that the Messiah would remove the sword that guarded Eden and reopen the gates to paradise. And in John chapter four, Jesus reveals himself as the Messiah to the Samaritan woman at the well. That's one example. Here's another. Symbols of Eden decorated the Jewish temple walls in Jerusalem, the place where God was thought to dwell, to live. And in John's gospel, Jesus' first public act of ministry is the cleansing of the temple, through which he communicates that he is now the dwelling place of God the dwelling place of God's presence here on earth. There's more, but I'll stop there. And so John's gospel prepares us to discover in Jesus, the one who will get us back to the garden, back to that place where we can walk with God and talk with God and God will reassure us that we are his own. Now, the final verses of John 19, the chapter describing Jesus' death on Good Friday, they tell us that after Jesus died, the Pharisee Nicodemus comes and seeks permission of Pilate to take possession of Jesus' corpse. The gospel narrator tells us, Now there was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified. And in the garden, there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So the setting of that first Easter morning, my friends, is a garden. I mean, yes, it had a tomb in it, but it's not described as a cemetery. It's described as a garden. It's explaining why Mary initially mistakes Jesus for the gardener. But this resurrection story is more than simply a return to the garden. It's a new beginning to life, a genesis. Not surprising since both the Hebrew Bible, those opening pages of the Old Testament, and the Gospel of John, both of them open by announcing Genesis. They commence in the beginning. Easter morning is a new beginning made possible because of Jesus. We know that first beginning in the garden didn't end so well. It was a place of beauty, fellowship, and peace. Who could have wanted anything more? The only thing asked of that first man and woman is that they trust God. For in fact, had they trusted, they would have found it easy to obey God's one rule of not partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But their trust in God was easily undermined. It didn't take much effort on the part of the serpent. And then we read that the man and woman, I'm reading now from chapter three, <clears throat> heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God said, who told you that you were naked? 
Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, uh, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you've done? How sad. Refreshing walks in the evening breeze have now turned into a game of hide and seek. God is seeking, but the man and the woman are hiding. No longer walking and talking with God, but fearfully hiding from the one who so lovingly planted them in paradise. Before this time, it seems that God would come into the garden each evening and walk with the man and woman. What a way to live, right? Strolling each evening through the garden of paradise with God. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. What more incredible experience could there have been? But they blew it. And they were cast out of the garden, leaving generations of people to ask how they might get themselves back to the garden, striving to find that place of beauty and peace and fellowship with God. We've got to get ourselves back to the garden for we are more than elements, more than carbon or stardust. We are God's children yearning deep within our souls, to be in intimate fellowship with God, to experience paradise once again. Then Jesus comes, the one who was there in the beginning, the Genesis. John's gospel tells us Jesus lives and dies and rises from the dead. And it is a new day, a second Genesis, a fresh beginning. On that first Easter morning, Mary enters the garden not to avoid Jesus as that first man and woman did, but seeking him. Although never imagining the state in which she'd find him, she is broken down by grief. Perhaps she moved through all five stages over the course of the weekend. <laughs> Perhaps she's even arrived at acceptance, for she's come to the tomb expecting only to find a corpse. When Jesus speaks Mary's name, she knows his voice. She knows who this is and what's happened. And she will not hide from Jesus as that first man and woman hid when God called to them. She addresses Jesus as teacher, for that's who she's known him to be. She's apparently ready to just throw her arms around him until Jesus advises her against it. Yet his next words to her change everything forever and not just for Mary. Now, she too isn't permitted to stay in the garden, but she's not cast out. She is sent forth with a mission. Go, Jesus instructs her, to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father. Did you notice that? The promise that we read in the gospel's introduction has been fulfilled, our power to become children of God by trusting in Jesus, by trusting in Jesus, Mary, the gospel disciples, and all of us across the centuries since, all of us who trust in Jesus have become children of God. You know, 395 artists have covered Mitchell's Woodstock. Clearly, a lot of people believe we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. But here's the truth. We can't get there on our own. We can't do it by ourselves. In fact, we can't do it at all. But that's okay. Because on that first Easter morning so long ago, Jesus did it for us. We need no longer frantically strive to find that place of beauty and peace and fellowship with God. Jesus is that place. Through his resurrection and the gift of his spirit, we can now walk and talk 
with God every day. And we can hear his voice reassuring us that we are his own. Can you imagine that garden? A place of beauty and peace and intimate fellowship with God. Well, there's really no need to imagine it. You don't need to get back there. Jesus has brought it to you. Amen.